Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Bob, Sein, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kof, Chof, Lamed, Mel, Yon, Samech, Ein, Pei, Fet, Sadi, Kuf, Reish, Shun, Sin, Tov. Now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another lesson in our series from the Aleph Bet, a series for anyone of any age who wishes to learn the Hebrew alphabet, and to be able to read and understand many Hebrew words that are at the heart of Judaism. I'm Mark Golub, and as always, it's a pleasure for me to be with you. And on this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at your first real Hebrew word, not some nonsense word but your first real Hebrew word that you'll be able to read and understand. But first, let's do a quick review before we move on to our next Hebrew letter. If you've been with us for our previous lessons, you've already learned the last two letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the Shin and the Tuf. And the name of a Hebrew letter tells you the sound that Hebrew letter makes. The Shin makes the Sh sound of the letters SH in English, and the Tuf makes English T sound, T. We also learned that in Hebrew, consonants are letters, like the Shin and the Tuf, while Hebrew vowels are dots and dashes. And the Hebrew vowels we've learned already are the Patach and the Kamatz both of which tend to make the same vowel sound, ah, as in the English word father. And we've also learned that Hebrew vowels tend to be placed under or over Hebrew letters. Both the patach and the kamatz are placed under Hebrew letters. And because Hebrew is read down and then from right to left, a Hebrew syllable is read simply by adding a vowel sound to the Hebrew letter above that vowel to create a Hebrew syllable. So this Hebrew syllable is pronounced sha. The shin makes the sh sound, and the patach under the shin makes the ah sound. And by adding ah to the letter shin, we get the syllable sha. And basically, that's how simple it is to look at a Hebrew syllable and be able to pronounce it. That's what it means to be able to read in the sense of pronouncing Hebrew words. And we've also learned a rule to reading Hebrew that makes it especially easy to pronounce Hebrew words. Every Hebrew syllable has one vowel, must have one vowel, and only one vowel. Never more, never fewer. There's always a one-to-one -one correlation between the number of Hebrew vowels in a word and the number of syllables in that Hebrew word. Count the number of vowels in a Hebrew word and you immediately know how many syllables are in that Hebrew word. It's always the same number. So if a Hebrew word has one vowel, it has one syllable. If a Hebrew word has two vowels, it has two syllables. Three vowels, three syllables which is about as many syllables as Hebrew words tend to have. There are a few Hebrew words which have four vowels and therefore four syllables, but that's very rare. By the way, English does not work that way at all. There are many syllables with more than one vowel. There even was a final Jeopardy question recently asked where contestants were asked to identify an English word with four vowels in a row. And it's a one-syllable word with four vowels in a row. Can you imagine an English word with four vowels in a row? The English word is Q, as in a line of people waiting to do something, like buy a movie ticket. Q is a one-syllable English word with four vowels in that one syllable. Never in Hebrew. Hebrew is a very organized, logical, even mathematical language, and in Hebrew, every syllable has one vowel, 
always one vowel, never more than one vowel, never fewer. Every Hebrew syllable must have one vowel and can only have one vowel. So in this syllable, there is one vowel, the patach, and the syllable is pronounced, reading down, sha. And similarly, this syllable with a kamatz is also pronounced, sha. And this nonsense word has two vowels, and therefore two syllables, so that reading down and then reading right to left, this nonsense word is pronounced, sha sha. And since in Sephardic Hebrew the accent tends to be placed on the last syllable of the word, this nonsense word again is pronounced, sha sha. You'll also notice that the second shin has a dot inside it, this dot is called a dagesh. We spoke about this in our last lesson. Almost every Hebrew letter can have a dagesh in it, and in almost all cases, the dagesh does not affect the sound of a letter. Actually, in Sephardic Hebrew, there are three Hebrew letters that do change sounds depending on whether they do or don't have a dagesh. And we'll learn one of these letters a little later on in this program. But with all the other letters, the dagesh does not change the sound that letter makes. The dagesh is really a grammatical indicator, and later on I'll show you how it does help to pronounce Hebrew words more properly. But for now, simply understand that most Hebrew letters can have a dagesh, and that except for three Hebrew letters, the dagesh does not change the sound that letter makes. So, how would you read this Hebrew syllable? Ta is correct. How about this Hebrew syllable? Ta is correct again. And in Sephardic Hebrew, a tough with or without a dagesh is pronounced t as the English letter T. Whereas in Ashkenazic Hebrew, a tough without a dagesh is called a suf and is pronounced as the English letter S, S. That's why the Hebrew word for prayer shawl in Ashkenazic Hebrew is talis, whereas the word is pronounced talit in Sephardic Hebrew. In Sephardic Hebrew, the tough is pronounced the same way, t, like the English letter T, with or without the dagesh. And how would you pronounce this nonsense word? Tata is correct, mitsuyan, excellent. It's a two-syllable word because there are two vowels. The first syllable is pronounced ta, and the second syllable is pronounced ta, and the word is pronounced ta-ta. How about this nonsense word? Sha-ta is correct. The first syllable is pronounced sha, the second syllable is pronounced ta, and the word is pronounced shata. So how about this nonsense word? Take your time. How many vowels are in this nonsense word? That'll tell you how many syllables are in the word. Then pronounce the word syllable by syllable. If you pronounce this word tashata, you are absolutely correct. Mitsuyan, the first syllable is pronounced ta, the second syllable is pronounced sha, and the third syllable is pronounced ta. And this nonsense word is simply pronounced ta sha ta. So now it's time to learn your next Hebrew letter. It's the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's the letter bet. And take a good look at this letter, especially the bottom of the letter. When I'm teaching children this letter, bet, I point out that the bottom of the letter is like a bed. This is the bed. And I call the dagesh inside the bet a ball. The bet is built on a bed and has a ball inside. And uh, Alan suggested we even call this a bunk bed. 
It's a bunk bed. Somebody could sleep up here. Somebody could sleep down here. And in the bunk bed, we hang a ball. Anyway, this is the bet. It is pronounced as the English letter B. It makes the B sound, the English letter B. And the reason I stress the ball inside of this bet is because this letter, the bet, is one of the three Hebrew letters which does change when it appears without a dagesh. If one takes the ball out of the bet, the dagesh out of the bet, it changes the sound this letter makes. Actually, without a dagesh, the letter bet is pronounced like the English letter V, V, rather than B. But for now, we're only going to learn the letter bet with the dagesh. And this letter bet is pronounced B, like the English letter B. So how would you pronounce this Hebrew syllable? Ba is correct. How about this nonsense word? Baba is correct, Mitsuyan. How about this nonsense word? Baba ba is correct, Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan. Okay, how about this nonsense word? Take your time. Obviously, there are three vowels, so there are three syllables. So, how would you pronounce the first syllable? How would you pronounce the second syllable? And how would you pronounce the third syllable? Then simply string the three syllables together and you would pronounce this nonsense word Batasha. Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan. The first syllable is Ba, the second syllable is Ta, and the third syllable is Sha. And this nonsense word is pronounced batasha. And this is basically how Hebrew is pronounced. Though in our last lesson, I also showed you the secret to pronouncing any Hebrew word. And that secret is the shva. And to quickly remind you about the shva, the shva is the only set of dots in Hebrew which are not a vowel. And I taught you this rule last week. A shiva is never counted as a vowel. Never? Never. There are few things in life which are truly never. The shiva is never counted as a vowel. I cannot say this often enough because it's the secret to being able to pronounce any Hebrew word you see. The shiva is never counted as a vowel. Even when the shva makes a vowel sound, and sometimes the shva is pronounced as a short i, i, as in the word fish in English. But even when the shva makes a vowel sound, a shva is never counted as a vowel. And every Hebrew letter must have, does have, either a vowel or a shva. And I want to say that again. It's another important Hebrew rule. Every Hebrew letter must either have a vowel or a shva. Every Hebrew letter of every word does have either a vowel or a shva. But a shva is never counted as a vowel. And if a shva is silent, which is the shva we're learning first, if a shva is silent, what does it do? What's the point? of a silent shva. And we learned last time that the silent shva tells us which letter ends a Hebrew syllable. Technically, we say a silent shva closes a syllable. Either way, a silent shva ends or closes a Hebrew syllable. Let's take a look at how the silent shva operates. In this nonsense word, each letter has a vowel. So this nonsense word is pronounced Tasha. But in this Hebrew word, the shin no longer has a vowel. Instead, it has a silent shva. And when a letter has a silent shva, the letter over the silent shva ends the Hebrew 
syllable. It ends the preceding syllable. So in this nonsense word, the syllable ta is extended to include the shin with the silent shva, and the entire syllable is now pronounced tash. The ta is extended to include the shin with the silent shva under it, and the shin with the silent shva ends or closes the entire syllable. So, how would you read this syllable? Ba is correct. And how would you read this syllable? Bash is correct because the shin has a silent schwa under it so that the shin now ends or closes the entire syllable. Try another one. How would you read this? Sha is correct. Now how about this? Shat is correct, Mitsuyan. The tuff has a silent shva under it, so the tuff ends or closes the syllable, which begins with a shin and a kamats. Okay, how about this nonsense word? How many vowels are in this nonsense word? If you said two, you are correct. The patach under the bet and the kamats under the shin. The tuff has a schwa, and the schwa is never counted as a vowel. So there are only two vowels in this word, and therefore there are two syllables in this word. What's the first syllable? If you said ba, you are correct. The first syllable is the bet with a patach under it, ba. Now what's the second syllable? of this nonsense word. And if you said shot, you are correct. Again, Mitsuyan, the shin begins the second syllable of this nonsense word. It has a kamats under it. But the shin with a kamats is followed by a tuff with a silent schwa. And a silent schwa always extends a syllable and ends that syllable. And therefore, the second syllable of this nonsense word is Shot. Shot. And the entire word is pronounced bashat. Bashat. This two syllable nonsense word is pronounced bashat. By the way, I also taught you last time that if a silent shva comes under the last letter of a word, it doesn't actually have to be written because it's understood to be there even if it's not written. So in the word bashat, these two words are identical. Since every Hebrew letter must have either a vowel or a shva, since every Hebrew letter does have either a vowel or a shva, anytime you see a Hebrew letter at the end of a word without something under it, you know it must be a silent shva and that the silent shva simply is not being written because it's understood to be there. So again, in these two words, they're pronounced exactly the same way, bashat. With or without a silent shva being written, both words are pronounced bashat. So, now you're ready to learn your first real Hebrew word. So far, we've only been working with nonsense words, nonsense syllables strung together. But here is your first real Hebrew word. And before I show it to you, I want you to know the word you're about to see is the most important single word in the living experience of the Jewish people. It's possible to say that this word you're about to read and understand is the most important word in the Jewish tradition. And this is the word. Can you read this word? It has two vowels, so it obviously has two syllables. How would you pronounce this real Hebrew word? And for many of you, maybe for most of you, it's a word you know. And if you said Shabbat, Mitsuyan, you are absolutely correct. 
the word is Shabbat. The first syllable is Sha. The second syllable is Bat, with the tuff having an understood silent Shva to end or close the second syllable. And this two-syllable word is read Shabbat. And it's the most important word in the living experience of the Jewish people. And what does the word Shabbat mean? I mean, really mean. Well, I want to begin to teach you one more thing about the Hebrew language that will help you understand what the word Shabbat really means. In Hebrew, words tend to be built upon three root letters. Virtually every Hebrew word has a three-letter root. And if you know what the root of a word is, you'll always have an idea of what the word means. And I'll give you examples of how this works as we continue to learn together. But for now, just understand, Hebrew words tend to be made up of three root letters. And if you know the meaning of the three-letter root, it'll always help you understand what a word with that three-letter root means. So in this case, with the word Shabbat, the three-letter root is Shin, Bet, and Tuf. And the meaning of this three-letter root always has something to do with resting. Whenever these three letters, Shin, Bet, Tuf, appear in this order as the root of a Hebrew word, the Hebrew word always will have something to do with resting. And when you create a noun with this three-letter root, shin, bet, tough, it refers to a time for resting. And so the word Shabbat means a time or a day for resting. Shabbat means day of rest. That's what the Hebrew word Shabbat means. Day of rest from the root resting. In the Jewish tradition, the Shabbat is the most wonderful time, the most wonderful day of all. It's said to be a foretaste of the messianic world in which all humanity will know peace and tranquility and joy. The Shabbat begins at sundown on Friday evening and goes until sundown on Saturday evening. All 24-hour days in the Jewish tradition begin at sundown in the evening rather than in the morning because in the creation story, in the first chapter of the book of Genesis, each 24-hour day is described as beginning at evening. And it's an exquisite day of Jewish family, of Jewish love of togetherness in the Jewish tradition, and all the cares of the work week are set aside. No one worries about schoolwork or business, and no one may be angry at anyone else in the family on Shabbat. One may never yell at a child on Shabbat. One is even free from being angry at the evils and injustices of the world on Shabbat. On Shabbat, on this exquisite day of rest, one is even free from working to improve the human condition. On Shabbat, everyone gets to rest, to refresh one's soul. And the family has the chance to spend time together in joy. And there are blessings sung to start the Shabbat, the blessing over candles in anticipation of the holiday. A kiddush that blesses and begins the Shabbat, recited with a cup of wine, is a symbol of joy of the Shabbat. A blessing over the challah, the braided bread of Shabbat. And there's the blessing of children and grandchildren. The priestly blessing that's a gift to every child from a parent or a grandparent. And the Shabbat is all about laughter, and good conversation, and then doing whatever a family enjoys doing together. There's nothing like Shabbat, this day of rest. I get goose pimples even talking about it. In the sense that this is a day set apart from all the tumult and anxiety of everyday life. 
Creation itself gets to rest on the Shabbat so that nothing is supposed to be built or destroyed on Shabbat. And so that husbands and wives have a moment to renew bonds of love. And parents and children have a moment to appreciate how wonderful life is together. And Shabbat is the time when the Jewish community, the Jewish people, the Jewish family renews its commitment to Torah and to each other. The Jewish tradition says that one who observes the Shabbat is given credit for having observed all 613 Jewish commandments. And one of the most well-known and profound of Jewish truths stated by the great Jewish poet of the early 20th century, Achad Ha'am, the truth is, more than the Jews have kept the Shabbat, the Shabbat has kept the Jews. The reason the word Shabbat is the most important word in the living experience of the Jewish people is that the Shabbat has been and remains the center of Jewish life. Everything in Jewish life is compared to the Shabbat as the quintessential Jewish experience. And whether a family keeps a very traditional Shabbat or a less traditional Shabbat, or whatever Shabbat works for them, so long as some Shabbat is observed in a Jewish home without fail, then that home has an unmistakable Jewish identity. And children raised in that home, a home with Shabbat, those children tend to grow up with a strong sense of their own Jewish identity and the love of the Jewish tradition. More than the Jews have kept the Shabbat, the Shabbat has kept the Jews. And now you can read and understand your first Hebrew word, the word Shabbat. Next time we meet, I'll teach you more Hebrew letters and vowels and more Hebrew words as we learn together on From the Aleph Bet. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of From the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of this series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS, a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more will be pleased to send you the entire 20-program Series 1 of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, Expanding Jewish Understanding, Celebrating All Things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zayn, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kav, Chav, Lamed, Mem, Yon, Samech,